Hey folks, I want to show you a video today I made about the uh, notorious phenomenon of the freezing water dispenser on certain types of G refrigerators. Now these models are typically the ones uh, you find with a icing water dispenser mounted here on the freezer door. <clears throat> I strongly recommend you perform troubleshooting manual steps for your particular refrigerator. Now, for my GE refrigerator, here are the steps from the owner's manual. Step one. Uh, make sure the water supply line is turned off uh, or, or not connected. Uh, or make sure that it's not turned off or not connected. So, uh, step two is water filter. Uh, it might be clogged, so you'll want to either uh, replace the filter cartridge or remove the filter and for troubleshooting purposes install the bypass plug. Step three, air may be trapped in the water system, so you want to press the dispenser arm for at least two minutes to fix that issue. And step four, the dispenser is locked, uh, and you want to press and hold the lock pad for three seconds. We'll go through each of these real quick. All right. First, the likelihood is pretty high that if water is flowing to your sink, it's also probably flowing to your refrigerator. Uh, and also, if your ice maker is making ice, and it has continued to make ice for, let's say, the last 24 or 36 hours, all right, but you're not getting water to the water dispenser, you're getting water to your refrigerator, it's just not coming to the water dispenser. So that's your basic troubleshooting step. Uh, but still, you want to make sure that your water is getting there. So if you know where the water is shut off your refrigerator, check to make sure it's not accidentally closed off. Or maybe somebody closed, you tapped the water line, your hot water heater, and somebody shut that off, forgot to turn it back on, whatever. Or you may have a situation where you uh, have a installed emergency water shutoff that's designed to turn your water off to the refrigerator in the event of a leak. Now, I actually have one of those installed here on this refrigerator. Uh, we, we place the sensor under the refrigerator uh, below the dispenser, and I'll, I'll show you real quick where that's at. Down here, there's the actual sensor that will detect any leaks that could occur if we accidentally put a glass here in the water dispenser and somebody walked off or forgot it was on there. If it started overflowing on the, the door for whatever reason, or let's just say it leaked from the door uncontrollably, this emergency shutoff would shut off the entire water flow to the refrigerator. And the place that it does that is over here, and we'll show you that real quick. We put a little control panel right here it's mounted close to the wall there's three buttons a white one a red one and a green one uh, the green opens the valve so water flows the red shuts it off and in the event that an emergency shutoff occurs the white is a reset button to shut off the alarm and you press green to turn the water back on it's um, this thing's made by a company called Onsite Pro the product is called flood stop systems just google it uh, it'll be the best hundred dollars you ever spend. I love these things. We've got them in our hot water heater, refrigerator, and the washing machine, and they work great. Uh, in any case, uh, make sure if you do have flood stop, the green button is pressed and the valve is open. And you know if you have these things, you'll actually hear the sound of the valve opening and letting the water flow in. All right. Uh, next, next step back over here in the refrigerator is to place a bypass plug in for the water filter. Now, we have our water filter back here. We'll get our milk out of the way so we can actually see it. And there it is back there. Uh, note we have the date that the filter will be changed since it doesn't have an automatic pop-out button that tells us that it's clogged up. Part of the reason it's on the troubleshooting step. So the thing that we're going to want to do is locate our bypass valve, which we have over here somewhere, as I'm sure. Unscrew the filter screw this in its place and instead of the water going through the filter it'll go and bypass and go straight from your water tap right into the uh, water dispenser. Now the idea there being if um, if your water filter is a problem and it's got your system clogged up your bypass valve from a troubleshooting standpoint will ensure that okay there's the problem in which case the solution here of course is replace the filter. Alright, the next step is troubleshoot air and lines. I'm not really a big fan of this because 
Uh, if you're going to have this, likely you're going to have this when you first get the fridge. But basically what they're saying here is uh, in order to troubleshoot this step, they, they, what they want you to do, and we'll try to zoom in if we can, hold down the line. All right, let's make sure we got it set for water. And we hold down the line, and you see that, that there's no water coming out. And they want you to do this for two whole minutes. Now, why do I not like that? Well, you know, basically, you have electronics in there that are operating during that time. I honestly don't know how, how much it's going to affect them, but that's the troubleshooting step. Hold it down for two minutes. If there's any air in the line, it should have purged it by that time. Um, all right. The next step, if you look closely here, and let's zoom in, on the far right side on this panel, we have a lock. All right. Now, this this is kind of weird in a way. Um, as far as uh, this step, I, I personally think it should be the first because it's the easiest and most obvious. But here's what they're assuming when you troubleshoot this step. I say it's easy and obvious because when you press it and you hold it for three seconds, when it's working properly, you see that the green LED is lit. But what if that green LED is not lit? I mean, it's inoperative. If you hold it for three seconds, you won't see it flash, and you won't see it turn on or off. So that's what this step is to cover down on, is in the event that the light here doesn't work, that you physically lock and unlock the, the panel. All right, if that fixes the problem, you, you know you got a little bit of electronics issue here. At a minimum, this light probably needs to be troubleshot. So you may need to possibly replace some of the circuit board. But if, if that doesn't fix the problem, we're on to the next step. All right, technically at this point, you're actually done with the factory troubleshooting steps. That's right out of the manual, at least for this model uh, uh, freezer. And at this point, uh, there is actually an additional step you can do. Now, you'll find this online, and a lot of people have written about it, this, and, and this kind of leads us in the direction where we're going for this whole procedure, which is, there is a tube down here, a water dispenser tube, and what can happen in some cases, and we'll turn the light on so you can see it better, right there, that can get frozen up right inside the door. Okay, so here's one of the things you can do. Now this is a very high-tech troubleshooting step, but basically you turn the light on so you can see in here, and you leave it on for 24 hours. Now, you probably will not physically need to have it on for 24 hours. In my case, when I did this troubleshooting step, and yes, my line was clogged up, uh, I came back in five hours, and lo and behold, everything is working again. All right. So what that proved is the next steps we're about to do in installing the heater for the system is definitely a needed step because what happened is this line froze up somewhere between here and where it comes in through the back of the door. All right. Now, here's an important point. You are almost 100% certain that if you leave the light on 24 hours and it starts working again, that is the source of the problem. The line froze up. However, if you leave it on 24 hours and it still doesn't work, that doesn't necessarily mean that installing the heater won't fix the problem. One is an absolute certainty that your troubleshooting was correct. The other one may require you to go to the next step. All right, so that's what we're here for, the next step, the main reason we're here to do all this. And that is to install the GE-approved heater element for this refrigerator. Uh, this was an aftermarket thing GE did. I think they started to figure out that either because of the manner in which they're insulating uh, this this system in here or, or the water tube itself uh, it wasn't quite right or, or there were uh, certain problems particularly when ice gets stuck in the hopper door all right it can actually freeze up the line so this heater element will fix those problems all right for for this freezer the part number for this heater element which is right over here all right in this box Part number for that is the WR49 X-Ray 10173. Now, 
what you need for your system may be different. So uh, check for the model that you need as to which part number. There's a, two or three different part numbers out there. All right. So the first thing you need to do is take out the part from the box. This is actually an important step. Uh, you want to make sure you have everything here. So you open the box up. First thing, you should have the installation instructions. Uh, you may have an invoice from the vendor. And then the next piece right here, this is the actual heater element. It's a pretty simple uh, thing. Basically all this is is a uh, resistor. And when electrical current flows through here, it will create resistance. We know uh, when resistance is created, heat is generated. So that's how it heats, is through electrical resistance. By the way, uh, I, I measured the ohm resistance on this with a multimeter. If you have one handy, check it out. Uh, I can't tell you what the exact specs are. This particular one had 100 ohms. Yours may be more, maybe less. Here's the trick. If you have infinite resistance or zero resistance, you probably have a bad heater element. So keep that in mind. All right, and then the rest of the components are two inline red splices, all right, with metal conductors. Now, you want to inspect these splices. This is kind of an important step. A lot of people overlook this and they'll create problems later. All right, now, don't know if you can see this very well, but there's a metal piece here on the top of the splice. All right. This folds over on top of it. Now there's two ends. This end here has two openings. This end has a closed end and an opening. All right. The trick is this splice should be inserted into the red plastic but not down far enough to create any obstruction for uh, the openings. So what you want to do is grab your heater and throw one of the wires down the holes and make sure all right look and see they can go all the way through and you can see on this side all the way through without any obstructions. Now if you find it's hitting something in there physically look and then pull this metal piece away using a little small jeweler screwdriver or knife or whatever so it's not obstructing those holes. All right, very important step. Otherwise, when you get to the point of crimping these things, you may end up having a situation where you lose this part, i.e. you use it and it doesn't work right for you, and then you got to start over. And unfortunately, you don't have any spares here. So it's very important you do this step. All right. Alright, so hopefully this video will supplement the instructions that you got in the box. Um, the, the instructions have a lot of steps that are left to your imagination or outright just left out. So hopefully the, the video will fill in the gaps here. Here goes. Alright, first step is to remove the outer face plate. So uh, on this particular model, what I recommend you do is go ahead and pull out the little water trap thingy and we'll set that off the side over here and this faceplate for this model yours may be different this faceplate here is just held in uh, with, with little keepers so what you want to do is pull and we'll see if we get a close up here you want to pull on this inside lip a little bit so it pulls away and you do it on each side a little bit at a time until the whole thing is pulled away not trying to grab it or force it but pulling little sections at a time until all of them start to come loose okay there we go here's the key point these little keepers here you don't want to break these you're going to need these to put this thing back in and this is a mounting boss to make sure you don't put it in the wrong way. Also, if you notice, there's a little cutout here for the main board. Okay, so we'll put that off to the side. All right, the next step is...
Okay, before we go any further, uh, the next thing we want to do is, is definitely cut power to this entire system. Remember, you're working with live uh, wires and live circuits, so we don't want to destroy anything or electrocute anybody. So make sure you unplug it. Uh, we went ahead and pulled the circuit breaker, so you can see there's no more digits here on the control panel. The power is off. Um, next, you want to make sure that uh, the water flow is off to the dispenser. We turned ours off. At our flood stop, uh, you can turn yours off in the basement on the little uh, T handle where it connects into the water line. Um, either way you do it, just make sure you uh, cut the water off. All right, we've already pulled off uh, the face plate that goes around the edge of it. Um, next thing we're, you're going to want to do is uh, go ahead and pull off what they call the main board and the mounting cradle, which you'll see in a second, and disconnect it from the wiring harness. Uh, before we go any further, did I mention you may want to make sure your power is off? All right, hopefully you were listening. Let's go to the next step. Now, taking this off for this model is, is relatively simple. What you're going to need is, is something similar to like a skewer stick or a relatively sharp point. And what you're going to want to do, let's get in close so you can look at it real quick and put a flashlight on it. So you can see this up close. There's going to be three little holes in here. One, two, and three. And what we're going to want to do is put this little thing in here, not too hard, until we feel we, we start with one side or the other. In this case, we'll go ahead and start on the far right side. All right. And then we pop it in. It's a little little thing we need to catch right there and as soon as we get it you're gonna feel try this side again well it's trying to be difficult there it is you'll feel it start to pop out there you go and then you pop out the other side and you're done now don't let it free fall all right, now we'll bring the camera back over. And then what you'll notice is there's a mounting point up top that it hooked into. Those three keepers keep it in place at the bottom. So what we're going to want to do is we'll get a close-up here. And now you'll see the main board here has one, two, there we go, one, two, three, wiring harnesses all right so what we're going to want to do is note how these wiring harnesses come through the cradle this one the six prong harness comes through the middle and these two harnesses over here come through the right hand side all right so let's go ahead and disconnect the main board now how we do that is actually pretty simple what we're going to want to do is we've got these little white keepers here all right so we lift these up with a small screwdriver or what have you or maybe even our finger might work and we pull these up just enough to get the plug started so you can start to pull it away So, might take a little bit of finesse in it, but once you get it going, it should come all the way out. And at a certain point, all you're really refining is resistance of the plug, not these. So right now, the only thing we're really fighting in getting this out is the resistance of these uh, prongs right here against the inside of here. We're going to do the same thing over here. Now you notice on this particular one that two of the wires are coming in from the left hand side and the other two are coming over from the right hand side but they all feed into one uh, connector here. So same thing as before. We lift up on this. There we go. And as soon as we clear the boss, right there, we'll have it on its way. And 
Now the key thing is you don't want to do any radical difficult maneuvers here. Nice smooth maneuvers so you don't break the mounting bosses, you don't break the connectors, and you definitely don't pull the wires away from any of the connectors. That would be a bad thing. Last one coming out. See, that's what you don't want to do, what I just did there. Now, unfortunately, this thing was probably pretty weak, but we'll go ahead and pull it away. And this connector right here, we may want to shore it up a little bit of uh, crazy glue or something like that to, to hold it back on when we put it back in. But it should keep by itself, but just to be on the safe side, we'll secure it that way. All right, now our main board, which uh, we, we have something in there that... Uh, Kind of makes a little bit of rattling in there. Not sure what it is. But our main board is now separated from the cradle assembly. We'll put that over here. And our next step is to go ahead and pull the cradle assembly off. And for this, um, we'll go ahead and get a power screwdriver, which works wonders, which is right here. And we will set it for unscrew. We got four screws here. Pull each of them out. Now, if you don't have a power screwdriver, just use a regular number one or number two Phillips. No problem. All right. Now, be careful. Don't lose these screws because it would be real hard to uh, replace them since they're kind of aluminum screws and. Uh, well, you just don't want to have to mess around with that. So, you get all four screws, you go ahead, set them off to the side, and at this point now, you're ready to pull the cradle assembly off. Now again, note where the wires come through. This is important because you'll need to remember this when you put it back together. The gray and the red wire are coming through the far left opening, the six wire connector through the one in the middle, and these two, the, the two blacks, and the red and yellow are coming in from the right hand side and what you'll notice when you pull it out is the red and the yellow has a little mounting boss down here and the black one is just kept off to the side so we go ahead and pull those away and now we have full access to the water tube now this this item here and we'll show you put a little light on it this item here is a servo. This powers the servo, which basically opens the hopper door. So when you press the, uh, the back of the depressor knob uh, on here, if you have it set for ice, it's automatically going to open the hopper door. All right. So that's what that is for. This six wire connector runs the main board for this entire system. And uh, not sure what the other wiring harnesses do. We just need to make sure that they all get plugged back in and put in their proper place. So, what is it we're here to do? Well, here's the issue. This water tube right here, if ice forms up in here or gets stuck in here, it gets cold enough right here to start freezing the tube right here. So this is what the water heater is going to prevent. In addition, some theorize that because this may not be properly insulated back here where it comes through the back of the door we're going to go ahead and put RTV in there so we're going to do that right now so we're going to grab a tube of RTV we'll take a break okay uh, the RTV I got here is GE premium waterproof silicone silicone tube clear alright this stuff is great I use it for everything everything inside and outside the house uh, three hours it's ready in your shower uh, five hours mold free protection stuff doesn't cost that much um, supposedly it's one of the highest rated and best performing uh, silicon RTVs out there so we're gonna go ahead and what we're gonna do let's do a close-up if we can and we'll put a little bit of light in here so you can see we're gonna slather a little bit of RTV back in there make sure it's flowing there you go get a little bit back there 
and then what we're going to want to do is go ahead and press the remainder in by hand all right now the thing we need to do is clean up the balance of it we don't want any excess silicon on this area right here all of this down here and all of this because that is where the heater element is going to go so let's take a quick break and get up some cleanup materials and then we'll clean that up alright uh, went ahead and uh, cleaned off all the excess RTV and it's relatively clean in there I'm gonna do one little extra step which isn't in anywhere in the procedures but it's a really good step to do since I know what we intend to put in there one of the things that I'm going to do is is grab some uh, uh, cleaner and I'm going to use an alcohol swab to do it alright so if you don't have an alcohol swab no big deal get a little uh, piece of cotton or a, a, a cotton ball will work if you got some alcohol great well, I just happen to have a swab now why do I use this well it's pretty simple actually what I've found in doing a lot of work on various things including automotive and what have you most of the adhesives that are used I also use this to clean this up a little bit um, the prep for most of the adhesives that are out there uh, the first step in the prep is almost always to throw alcohol on there as, as a cleaning step and it almost guarantees better adhesion to any kind of adhesive you're going to use so we want all the alcohol gone before we go to the next step and it looks like we are and at this point we are ready to put our heater element in so here's what we're going to do all right you notice here we got our six prong connector and this is the grommet where it comes in from the uh, other side what we're going to do is unwrap our heater element and then our next step you can see how this is going to work all right this is going to go right right in this spot right here all right now if you notice there's a little bit of a cutaway there all right that's intentional that's to wrap around uh, you know basically the way it's going to work is the heat's going to be formed right from here but you notice there's metal all around here of course metal is a conductor so what you want to do is make sure this gets wrapped around that too so it'll conduct the heat uh, around there so next step we're going to pull off and expose the adhesive and then we're going to try to gently place this into the area making sure that we center it that we get that well placed like so and we have it fully form fitted and that's actually in the instructions they they talk about the issue of ensuring that it's properly form fitted um, around that tube so now what you've got is it's, it's all seated around the tube plus part of the metal this aluminum here is, is actually on the tube so that's going to help heat the tube when this heats up they're conductors alright now also in the directions they talk about the issue of if there's already a heater mounted there well I'm not a rocket scientist but I'm gonna be a betting man and say if there's already a heater there and this silly thing isn't working right probably that heater ain't working no more now they talk about the issue of having these spliced in approximately one inch down from where the grommet is and if you already have an existing heater go two inches down or an inch below where the current splice is for the heater um, okay fine well we don't have one already installed we just put our own in right now so basically what we're talking about is we're going to want to start the splice right about in here alright so how are we going to do that alright first things first we're going to grab one of the two wires alright we'll, we'll grab this one doesn't matter which one alright now it talks to wire number two and wire number six now let's get a close-up here so you can see this wire number two is this red wire right there 
Wire number six is a black wire with a white stripe. Okay, so I'm going to do the, the red wire first. Notice there's no other red wires. So I'm going to grab the red wire up here. All right, and there it is. And as best I can tell, and let me verify this wire here. Yep, this is the only black and white wire, so this should be easy to do. So what we're going to do is right about here, we're going to splice it in. So let's grab the splice. All right, we go back to our parts kit. We get our first splice. And we've already checked in to make sure, yep, we got proper clearance. So we're going to grab our splice. And we're going to take a quick break and locate. All right, we're back. We locate our vice grips. That's what we're looking for. So we'll put one splice down here in the door, ready to go. Now, this important step. Remember what we talked about here. You got the open end and you got the closed end right here. So this wire is going to go up and it's going to stop right on here. That's going to be this white wire. So the white wire is going to go in right there like that. And you got to make sure it stays in there. You can't have it creeping out when you're ready to splice it. So let's go ahead and get that ready to go. So we got the white wire in and we're ready. Now we want to keep pressure on it. And we want to take the red one. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. So let's see if we can get that red one sitting on the outer side, if you will. So we pull it out so it's open over to here. And what we're going to do, watch this. We're going to slide it in to that second channel where the wires go in. Now, be careful. See, that white wire already started to slip out. We don't want that. So we want to push it back in. So now we got both wires in. Note, if we look in from the side, we can see both wires are in. So then what we want to do is take and get our vice grips, or if you don't have vice grips, get a set of pliers, and you want to honk down on that thing, not too terribly tight, but press down so you get both wires. And what's going to happen, you'll even, you know, for this, oops, we just did something really bad. So we're going to have to redo. Let's Okay, so we went ahead and, and crimped this down. Now, you'll notice that the white wire here is on the inside of here where, where we showed the closed end. So the white wire is backed up against the closed end. Important thing, the metal piece now is flush with the top of the plastic. And most importantly, look in the side, the red wire is crimped inside of the, the the metal conductor there. Now if it's on the outside and you can pull it away from the wire, you got a problem. All right. What you're going to have to do, and this is what I did because I had the problem myself, is you're going to have to pull that conductor back up just enough so you can get that red wire in. And you'll need something like a real small jeweler screwdriver to slowly pry this back up enough to allow you to get that red wire underneath. And I was able to recover uh, and no problem. So now you're ready to close the flap. So you go ahead and press this over, snap it into place. You'll hear it snap. All right, you've now got one end crimped. All right, now we need to get the other end working. All right, so we're going to grab our second one, recheck to make sure we can see down the hole. We can. We're going to grab our second white wire and we're going to locate pin number six which is the black and white conductor. We're going to want to pull it away a little bit so it's separate from all the rest. A little bit easier to work with. And then we're going to go ahead, push the white wire in, get it ready, hold it in place with our finger, and then get the black conductor mounted in, the black and white, I'm sorry, and get it in there so it's fully seated, so both of them are fully seated and ready to crimp. We're then going to grab our vice grips or pliers, whatever you've got, and go ahead and crimp them down. Now, ideally, if you do this right, you should hear it kind of pop into place. Not always, but mostly. Or you'll feel it kind of goose its way in. It'll, it'll just go in and slide its way in, and now it's flush again. We want to make the same check as before. 
We want to make sure that the white wire didn't slide back down. It didn't. I can see it there. And we want to look in the side and make sure those prongs, all right, have grabbed onto the wire and the wire can't be pulled away. It's good to go. All right, we want to snap that back in. You hear the snap, and you're all set. All right, let's rejoin where we were on our instructions. <clears throat> okay, let's pull this out here. Now, um, we, we've got our wiring harness mounted to the left side, close to here, which is what we want. So this will be pulled away and it won't bind up either on the hopper door, because remember, this door comes out all the way to here. So we want these wires kind of out over to the side, just like we've got it. If anything, we might even uh, keep these together if we want, and we'll go grab some electrical tape and just tape them together or tape them against the back wall right like there. So let's go ahead and take a quick break. All right, we're back. We found a little bit of electrical tape. So what we're going to do is cut a little piece right here. Have it sit back here against the back wall. And we'll put it right over where those two splices are. And have the hole just like that, right in there. Nice, nice and snug. All right, so it's out of the way. So we're good to go. All right. <clears throat> Now, um, I, I want to emphasize, on this particular model, I went with pins 2, which is a red one, and pin 6, which is a black one with a white stripe. Your model may be different, so check your instructions for your model. Make sure you get the right connectors. All right, uh, and you want to be careful with these splices because, for the most part, you generally can't reuse them. Once you, you, know, you use them, you bend them. Uh, but if you do need an extra, and for some reason you munge them up, your local auto parts store should have them, or electrical parts store should have them. Just make sure that you get one that has the right gauge for the wires you're working for. All right. So, uh, we've gone ahead and connected our splices. Um, it, it looks like we're now set and properly adhered to back here. This is out of the way. We can remount uh, our carriage assembly and, and have no problem. Uh, I guess the next step is we need to see if it's going to work. So the way the troubleshooting manual says, uh, or for the instructions for this, is we want to do a temp plug-in. And that's what we're going to do here. The idea being if it doesn't work, we don't want to have to reassemble this and disassemble it just to figure out it didn't work. So what we're going to have to do is have this plug and this plug uh, plugged in to make sure that everything does work. So we're going to go ahead and grab our board and we're going to grab our carriage assembly or whatever this wonderful device is called. Now what we're going to do is plug this back in ever so briefly. We're, we're not going to do any, you know, really lock in place stuff, but just enough to get power there. Okay. Same thing here. Want to be careful if we did break any of the prongs, like on this, that we don't hurt them anymore. And then finally put this one back in. Alright, so this is all going to be a temp thing. All right. Now, we're just going to leave that set for a moment. And the next thing we're going to have to do is turn the power on. So what we'll do at this point is... Okay, we know that our power is on because we have our light switch to press and we can see our lights on. So we clearly have electrical power, plus we can hear the compressor fan blowing. So the thing we want to do now is make sure that uh, our water supply is turned on. Now we did forget to turn that on, so we're going to take quickly going to do or actually two things. We're going to do or actually two things. Number one, uh, the main reason we came here was to install a heater uh, 
on on the water tube. Now you'll note uh, you can see the heater back there. All right, we want that heater to be running for approximately one minute. Now what we're looking to do is after a minute, I should be able to put my finger somewhere in that metal area. I'd recommend starting on the opposite edge where the wires come in and see if it's warming up or it's hot. It shouldn't be hot, but it should be warm to the touch. So let's go ahead and check it out. It's been about 45, 50 seconds. Let's see what we got. Yeah, it's a little warm. I would not call it hot. I would just say it's warm to the touch. And and that's the intent, is to keep that area warmed up. You, you don't want to be drawing a lot of current to have it hot, or God forbid, have it heat up the tube and overheat it and melt it. So you just want it warm. And this must be enough resistance to do just that. And after a minute, You'll, you'll feel that warm area and, and it'll flow to the heating tube. All right, so we've checked that, but what about the water supply? Does it work now? All right, what we're going to want to do is a very quick test and we're going to drop some water in the bottom, but let's verify by depressing the lever and let's get a shot in there to make sure we can see what's going on. Does the water go? Sure enough, the water comes out. So now we've got a water heater set up, and the only thing we have left to do is reinstall everything. So let's go ahead and do that. First things first, let's disconnect our main board again. So we'll go ahead and do that. And before we do that, of course, we're going to want to pull the power. So we're doing the same step as before. We're going to go ahead and try to back this off a little bit go slow make sure that you don't break your your uh, mounting bosses here and just slowly pull it away key element is nice even force get it over the edge first there nice slow pressure and then if you have any that are kind of jimmied out, make sure you don't break the mounting boss off. All right, so now we have our main board separated again. Let's go ahead and get this carriage assembly back in place. Now, remember what I told you, it's important that we remember where all the wires came through. So remember what I said, there were two sets that came on the right hand side. Now, what you remember is, this one kind of free-floated, but it has to come through in here. The screw goes in here, but the wires come in through this slot right here. But the red and yellow ones, as you'll note, have a little slot that they ride up through. So make sure they come up through those. So we'll get those in place right there. All right. Then, we've got that coming across, and this one will come across. Then we have... Uh, and this is where it gets a little trickier now because remember you now have these extra wires here they're not going to come through but what you're going to do is have your main wiring harness come through and just not be in the way of what remains and that might be a little tricky at first so we'll we'll try to maneuver this and and see you know what what will work best and then don't forget this wiring harness the left hand most will come in over on this side so let's what we don't want to do is have a situation where any wires are are hitting or tied up or or what have you you want them pretty pretty close to free now if there's a way that we can keep these uh in the hole that might actually work best but just make sure nothing is bunched up or binding on anything all right so, go ahead and maneuver those into position. It 
looks like that may work. Now the trick is, will this be enough give for a main board? So we're going to have to kind of visualize this here and see where it's going to connect in. And the short answer is, that should be just enough room. So if not, we'll have to disassemble it. But for now, it appears to be enough room. All right, so everything else, it appears, is going to be out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead, and our next step will be to put our screws back in. So we'll get our power screwdriver, see if we can locate that, which is up here. Grab our screws, and then put them in one at a time. I recommend you get the top screws in first. If you have a power screwdriver, don't screw it all the way in. Just screw it enough to tighten it up. Always hand tighten the last way with just a regular screwdriver. Okay? Now make sure everything is aligned properly. There we go. All right. get our bottom screws in and what we want to do is torque them all down to about a uniform torque. We don't want to over torque them, that'd be bad. Alright, so we take a regular hand screwdriver, number two bit should do it. Okay, that feels about right. Don't over tighten or you'll break these. These are kind of uh, easy to break. So keep going until you feel the same torque on all four right about there can't tell you the exact foot pounds but you'll feel it just don't over tighten okay this one unfortunately from the factory uh, when the factory folks put it in they unfortunately broke this because I saw it when I first pulled it out so we'll just have to be careful that we don't overdo that one all right we got our two harnesses coming in on the right hand side our six pronged here and our two prong on the far left I think we're ready to put our main board back in All right now put our first harness in and we're going to push that down a little bit and here's what we're going to do a little extra what we're going to do is grab some electrical tape and kind of help it you know just to keep it secure because this this is weakened now here just that one so we'll go ahead and pull off a little bit of electrical tape just to make sure that it doesn't accidentally come off. It, it won't hurt at all and if you have a situation like this let's go ahead and snip it a little bit and snip it again so we'll have a double double tap there. Alright so what we'll do is we'll do like that and the beauty of that is it holds that keeper down so it won't accidentally come out. And we'll put another one on there just to be on the safe side and that's probably a little bit better for a situation like that all right we'll do our four prong connector in here slide it in until it goes all the way and it snaps into place and then of course our last one hopefully we have plenty of room we shall see and we snap it into place but the real test is going to be will it seat and here's the issue it looks like it's going to be kind of tight so what we're probably going to need to do is loosen up uh, the screws particularly the top two and we may need to pull the the wiring harness through a little bit to give us a little bit more room so we can pull that wiring harness through so it'll seat on the upper keeper so now we may have to pull all four out but hopefully in this case we can do it with just two so actually no we're gonna need to loosen all four and pull the harness through 
Now, I'm not taking it all the way out. I'm just, there we go. Loosen it enough. I'll put this back in a little bit. All right. Just allow. Well, actually, we may need to take it all the way out. So we'll do that. Pull all four screws out. And then we'll pull the harness through. Because it apparently does need that little extra at the end. All right, so let's do that. So we pull the harness through. There. And we just make sure that those um, wires aren't binding up on anything. And we go ahead, oh, make sure that this harness on the left is back into place. And then we reseat the door like we had it before. And that should hopefully do the trick. Let's see. Looks like one of our uh, screws may not have gone in the proper hole, so we'll go ahead and back it out. Possibly on both sides. There we go. Sometimes this can be a little finicky. There we go. But we definitely want to make sure that we get it seated in the proper hole before we tighten it down. Looks like all our screws are in position. Now we just want to do a quick function check to see, yes, we are going to clear now the upper mounting boss. So let's take a look at that. It's got to, watch, this lip needs to mount under here and stop right here on this side. So watch, goes under, right there. And then slide it all the way to the left until you feel the whole thing go up in there. Then, before we go any further, make sure we torqued all the bolts down properly. We just want to do a quick function check. So we'll grab our regular screwdriver. Go in. Tighten it down until we hit there. Proper torque. Same thing here, there. And here, and here. Okay, now we're ready to put it all back together. So we put this under the lip, make sure that it's slid and aligned. And here's the trick. Here's what I noticed first time I dealt with this. What we want to do, grab a flashlight. Little tabs. One, actually there's only two I just noticed. So the inside and outside tab, there and there. What you want to do is line them up with the holes right here. So if you can get those aligned, which it looks like it's pretty close right there, maybe just a little off. 
you can do it from underneath and what you see is they weren't properly aligned so you move them over a little right there we go right there and then you recheck sure enough there it is boom right in so make sure these holes are aligned and it'll make it easier going back in all right next step we grab our outer face plate make sure cut outside is right here that's what it's for and remember there's a mounting boss right here so we put that in nice and slow all the way around so it's nice and uniform then what you want to do remember how it looks before you go it in you got one two three four they're all on the side four mounting tabs so what you're going to do is put it in have it nice and uniform what I recommend is start on the outside of the two two of the four press in that's in then the other side those two press in and make sure the middle ones are pressed in you're done alright last step is retrieve your water tray turn your power back on and we'll take a quick break to do alright we got our power back on and now we're going to do our final function check at this point we'll have to presume that the water heater is still working and we didn't bind or pinch any wires we just want to make sure that all of these buttons work properly and all of these buttons work properly so that everything was plugged back in and, and wired and working properly so we want to check water Yes, water dispenses. Check crushed ice. Takes a little time. Crushed ice dispenses. Cube dice. Definitely. All right. We want the light on, off, on, off. We want to verify the lock still works. Press and hold three. All right, now what does lock mean? Well, the obvious, hopefully. Nothing works. Nothing works. Unlock it, it works. It's a little kid lock. All right, last thing. This is an often overlooked step, but really kind of important. Let's make sure that our controls are still working. All right, so go warmer. Seven, back it down. Warmer, back it down. All right, so we know we can go in each direction. Wait, and then it'll hit a set point, and then the LEDs will come back off. I forget how long it takes, but there you go. About 20 seconds. We're all done, and hopefully you should not have any blocked water lines anymore. Good luck.